Time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. Hi, everybody. We've been here. Actually, we changed, didn't we? <laughs> yes, we did. We've been here. Most, Welcome back, yes. folks. <laughs> yeah. See, we, when we tell you we're going to be here the next day, we stay. I mean, we are, we are Donald Trumps. You know what I mean? 24-7. <laughs> we stay here. Uh, but, uh, and our guest, the sleeping bag wasn't all that bad. And so, but uh, I want to tell you about it. Dave, can you get a close up of our guest? Because you, you probably, when I started out like this, you're going, What is, what is he, he talking has about? Has he lost yeah, his people, mind? Yeah. Uh, actually, most people, when they watch this show, they don't even have to ask, Has he lost <laughs> his mind? Because most of you think I've already lost my mind. So that, that, that's the, there's the guy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about him. I'm going to go to part two. This of, is part two, that's why. Yes, he's this is part two. Way. Okay, part one, I, I'm sorry you missed it. <laughs> I am sorry. We'll, we'll give you a little recap, but uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, Kelly M. Williams is a phenomenal, God directed kind of guy. And uh, he'd have to be. When you hear this, the rest of this story, you're going you're gonna to say, wow, what would I do in that situation? That's, that's what I asked when I was reading the book. I, I, I was so enamored by this book, I took, I read half of it, and because I normally speed read, and I took it home, and 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 read the rest of it. I mean, it is that kind of book. So trust me, uh, he grew up uh, on a dairy farm. There, there's his face, uh, <laughs> in Kentucky. He graduated uh, from Liberty University, and he also graduated from Dallas Theological Seminary. So the guy's got double brains. Uh, he is uh, uh, husband to Tasha, right? Mm -hmm. Met at Liberty University. Uh, uh, father of five children. Give their names. Uh, Anastasia, Christiana, Joshua, Annalarie, and Journey Grace. Oh, I love those. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he, is, wow. <laughs> uh, he has been senior pastor of the Vanguard Church in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Okay. I love mountains. I don't like hot weather. We live, we live just across the street from the Gulf of Mexico, and I, I wish we lived just across the street from the highest mountain snow cap you could imagine. You're never satisfied, are you? <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm sad, but, but anyway, but he's living where I'd like to live. Uh, he, he's a 21 years pastor, and he has more than one church. So it's, it's one of those Southern Baptist guys, and he's a Bapticostal. He's, he's been tampered with. That's that's right. what happens. What's the name of the book, Herman? Oh, this, this is you, you got to get a copy when it when it goes up. You got to get a copy. T tell the story about the lady on the airplane coming here. We were caught in a holding pattern because uh, of the weather, and so we couldn't take off in Dallas to to get to Tampa. And so while we're sitting there, I was reading another book and struck up a conversation she did with me. And then she asked me why I was flying to Tampa. So I told her about your show, told her about the book, and showed her the book, and she asked if she could read it. And so she actually read half of it uh, while I was on the plane. Uh, she said, I'm not a Christian. I don't believe like you do. Uh, she said, uh, but about halfway through the book, she stops and she looks at me and she says, I see God in this book. Did and she know you were a Christian before that? Yes. Okay. She knew I was a pastor. Okay. And right. okay. uh, she had read the back of the... Yeah cover of the book okay. and, and it read the inside about the author so yeah. she she knew that okay. at that yeah. point good yeah. good so but but she felt something in there yes I've had uh, a couple of unbelievers actually in the last week that have reached out to me they've read the book and it has uh, begun a journey for them uh, and so I love evangelism I love prophecy yeah. Yeah. Uh, and God seems to be bringing the two together in this book. You're going to have to catch everybody up on this I, I am, program I, today. I am, I, okay. If, if I forget something, you just tell me. I okay? will. I'll, right. That's why I'm here. If I know. <laughs> <laughs> 60 years she's been telling me in my ear. <laughs> really? Honey, you want to say that again? Uh, as I left the first program, part one, I said to you, 9 plus 11 plus 2 plus zero, plus zero, plus one, add that up, 23. How does that enter into this whole context? And then we'll give you a recap. Mm -hmm. 
9-11 occurred in the middle of all of this prophetic vision that I was given because it happened in the year of 2001. And in the midst of uh, meeting the gentleman that I mentioned in the book uh, and in the midst of sharing eventually with him uh, and then uh, meeting with his presbytery, in the middle of that, 9-11 occurred. And so I talk in the book about how uh, this experience I had turned out to be a spiritual 9-11. And so if throughout the book I parallel uh, the experiences of 9-11 with the spiritual 9-11 that I, I went through. I want to ask you, keep that thought. When you added up those numbers and it came out to 23, because, see, in this whole context, 23 is a number that is like a like a like one of those lights that just keep coming on and coming mm -hmm. on and, and you, you see 23, 23. When you added that up and it came to 23, did you kind of go, huh? Yeah, over the course of 17 years in the process of the experience to writing this book, um, there were all kinds of 23 experiences that uh, it just, they were, as my friend Vance would say, they're aha moments. Yeah. Uh, and they reminded me that God, he says, steps of a righteous person are ordered by the Lord. So when you look back in your life, uh, you should see some order if you're walking by faith yes, yes, uh, yes, in Jesus yes, Christ. Yes. So, so you would look at a clock and you would see 123 or you would even go by a building and something about the time like 423 or whatever. So, uh, and, and you're getting to the place where you're saying, God, mm -hmm. can you stop? Right. I, I saw it so many times that, that I finally, it, it was no longer... Um, it just became mundane. Like it would happen just scores of times in the course of the day, in the course of the evening, in the course of the night. Uh, I'd be awakened at 123 and then at 231 and then at 321. Uh, and so I talk about that progression uh, in the book uh, and how God used uh, these 23s. And of course, the most famous Psalm yes. in the yeah, world say, uh, is yeah. Psalm 23. But you also in the book, what 23 means throughout the Bible too, because you have a whole Mm -hmm. study of 23 yes and how it fits yes and by the way so I don't forget this I, I've never seen anybody do this but he did it in his book I mean it's, it's the whole thing is un unusual uh, you have a section of where people ask questions yes because you can't read this book without when you finish it you're going to you're if you don't go to that page you're going to say well I'd like to have asked this why did he do this I don't think I would have ever given that answer well, believe it or not, then you, you go a little further, you go, there's my questions. And then you, then he, then you in depth, you, a, you answer them. So it's, it's, it's really well written. And I promise you, if you remember, if you watched the first one, that I was going to spring a surprise on him because the, the person in the book that he got this vision of with this mega church in Colorado Springs, uh, he never mentions his name. And I, and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But I have right here in my And we're not going to mention it book. either. You notice, you notice, I don't, but I, what I wanted to surprise you is I interviewed the guy in Colorado mm -hmm. about 10 years ago mm -hmm. in uh, uh, CBA. Was it a CBA, Linda? She wasn't there. Yes, it was CBA. Yeah, yeah she was there. Oh, was she there? Okay. Yeah. And, and about the book, because I, I love the book because of the title. It was mm -hmm. just so catchy. Mm -hmm. And he was a top author. I mean, that wasn't his only book, for goodness sakes. Mm -hmm. but, but I interviewed him, and, and it's so amazing. I mean, we have so much in common. Uh -huh. You're born in Kentucky, uh -huh. and, and Irish, and you know, uh -huh. all the things that on our first show that, that we have. So, and then all of a sudden, I'm getting in the book. I'm going, as I'm reading, I'm going, I know who this is. <laughs> and, then, and then he would explain a little further, and I go. Because you always think, well, maybe I'm wrong, because there's a lot of commonality in a lot of things we do. Uh -huh. And and so for, then he starts. I go no, no, that's the guy. So anyway, in, in this cover here, which I won't expose, uh -huh. is is the book. Yeah. And and I can remember just vividly mm -hmm. on on how we. You know, you said you said when you talked to them, you connected. Right. Okay. I just want you to know, you and I have connected. Yes. Okay. I never connected with this guy. Yes. So you, you, you know, there's certain mm -hmm. people you enter, uh, mm -hmm. and Linda knows, uh, my mm -hmm. assistant, I'll usually tell her, you know, I, well, I didn't mm -hmm. connect with that person at all. Mm -hmm. And and so there was something there. Yes. I do remember him saying, you're going you're gonna to get a charge out of it. After the interview, 
I do remember him saying, because I drank a lot of water, uh -huh. you know, hydrate myself because I, mm -hmm. I jog a lot. And I said, and so he was talking very candidly about drinking a lot of water. So I asked him, I said, how do you know you've drank enough water? And he said, if you pee white, you've drank enough water. <laughs> okay. Perfect. I, I, what I, in the no, world? No, that's what he said on here. I know he did, yeah, so, but. <laughs> honey, it's, it's things that happen okay. to your body. Whatever. But, but, but I remember, isn't that amazing that I would yes. remember that, that yeah. comment? Yes. And, and I remember there was a, 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 a huge preacher, whatever, and, and, and he used the word S-H-I-T because he looked out over the audience and he, and he felt they weren't even, he was making no, they weren't listening. Mm -hmm. And he said, you don't give, and he said the word, mm -hmm. and he continued to speak. And he said, now let me tell you something. From now on, I will be remembered that you heard that word. Mm -hmm. So he said, what I'm trying to do is connect with you right. so that it will go through here. Right. So that, it, but, it, but that I remember mm -hmm. so vividly. Mm -hmm. But this is the guy Mm -hmm. that I have met and interviewed many mm -hmm. years ago, 10 years yes. ago. Uh, now, just to kind of recap a little bit for somebody that just yeah. tuned in yeah. on this program, you had a vision in the night, mm -hmm. and it was like a flat screen TV. Yes. Yes, and I saw things that you couldn't know unless I believe God Almighty told you. Uh, went through a process. I talk about that in the book. Uh, eventually, he confirmed that privately, uh, and then I found myself uh, in a meeting with his presbytery uh, where he changed his mind with he and his wife, and my elders were present, and unfortunately, uh, I didn't expect the meeting to go the way it did. Uh, he denied everything at that point in the meeting, and then at the end of the meeting, um, I really didn't see this bus coming. Uh, they uh, called... Uh, for my repentance and it crushed my spirit and um, it so genuinely changed because when you first met him mm -hmm. he was humble and he, he yes. agreed with everything but then all of a sudden he switched so, he so he's the, talked he, to somebody he, in between he flipped the whole conversation yes yes and it and it turned out that he decided that he didn't want to uh, deal with it and so that How, began what size was his church thousands uh, yes, it was rather, rather large. It was the largest, at that time, the largest church uh, in, in our Colorado state. Springs. Yeah. yeah. And at that point, uh, I went into a wilderness experience. And in the middle, in the book, I talk about lost in the middle. Yes. Uh, 231 experiences, when the numbers are jumbled and life doesn't yeah. make sense. And for me, uh, I paralleled 9-11 uh, that happened to our country, to the spiritual 9-11. And then five years later, uh, on November 5th, uh, 2006, uh, it all comes out. It's plastered across uh, the world news, across international news. Five years later. And, you know, I, I'm sitting there and I'm watching it and I'm thinking to myself, uh, this doesn't have to happen. Uh, and what I, what I want your listeners and your viewers to understand is if you see someone fall publicly, just know that God has sent scores of people yes. to that individual privately. Yes because that's how much our Father loves us. He will never allow you to be tempted. No. Above your able. That's right. He will, with the temptation, provide a way of escape. That's right. The key is, will you take it? Mm -hmm. And if you see uh, a child of God fall publicly, like he did, just know that God had no other choice. And God loves us enough that he'll use even public humiliation to get our attention. Because at the end of the day, God's not concerned about our success. He's, he's already got enough. God's not concerned about our ego or our popularity. He's, he's already got all of that. Right. What God wants is our hearts. Yes. And God wants us to yield our lives, our hearts to Him. And, and unfortunately, God had to use um, a gay prostitute, the purchase of meth, uh, and a, a process that He didn't have to go through. And so for me, you know, I get asked all the time, why don't you mention his name? And here's why I don't mention his name. A couple of reasons. Number one, I appreciate that, by the um, way. I, I felt like the Lord told me not to. Yeah, I can see that. And number two, uh, I want him to know that his story's not done. 
that God is still redeeming him just right. like he's redeeming us. He started another church. Yes, yes. And, and every one of us uh, have things about our stories uh, that honestly, you know, when it all came out, I said to our church, who didn't know that I had been involved like this. My elders did, but the church didn't. In fact, you got some recommend, or some uh, uh, individuals that came against you that surprised you that, yes. that, that they did not agree with what you were doing at all Yes. and actually came against you. And then when it all came out, they apologized. Yes. And, and I can't blame them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the story's bizarre. Mm -hmm. The story's very difficult. It's very head-scratching. Um, when it came out, I said to our church, uh, his sin's in the, uh, the world news. Uh, ours isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, are we going to listen? Are we going to listen to the Lord? Uh, and yes, God loves us, and He always will. Mm -hmm. uh, but He also says to Moses, I will give my glory to no other. Yeah. And whenever we take the success of God and use it to our selfish gain, God's not okay with that. God wants us to enjoy His blessings, but He does not want us to take uh, credit for them. And oftentimes in life, isn't it interesting how we want to take credit for them and can't seem to enjoy them. God wants us to enjoy this life. God wants to enjoy the blessings that He's given us, but He doesn't want us to take credit for them. Now, now you were deemed that you would probably lose your church. Yes, uh, there was a whole lot of fear that went in. So it, there's it, the story. You, yeah. You've got, I mean, we're just bullet points. Yeah. But you've got to read the whole, the whole, I mean, it's like going to a movie and walking out half of it. <laughs> and you go, well, how'd, how'd this end? You've got to get the book. The, there was a lot of fear involved, uh, but I will say this. Um, I appreciate people like Jerry B. Jenkins who endorsed the front cover and, and hey, wrote. He's kind of well known. Yes. Tell, tell about him. Well, Jerry. Um, he was the co with Tim LaHaye. Yes, he was the, uh, the co author of uh, the Left Behind series, which yes. is the most popular yeah. Yeah. Uh, Christian series yeah. in the history Jerry of. Jerry Jenkins probably came away with four or five million dollars, <laughs> just, just to let you know. Uh, Jerry is a good friend, and he himself uh, was personally involved. Uh, not in my side of the story. He didn't know my side of the story until after uh, the public uh, recognition of the mm -hmm. fall. Uh, but he uh, personally was in relationship and he believes and continues to believe in what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, and I'm grateful for my elder board that blessed me to uh, publish this book. Mm -hmm. And my hope is what I'm finding is that there's scores of people that have been wounded by spiritual leaders and they've given up on God uh, and they've kind of thrown in the towel. And God, I, I pray, would use this book to reignite a fire in them like God did in Elijah that I talk about uh, at the beginning of the book, that they would come out of the cave uh, and get back to doing what God did, has called them did, to do. Did you cross that time when, I mean, it seems like all hell was against you? It was like, I, I'm doing right. Yes. And, and hell is, is coming down on me. Yes. The, the that, 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 that I wish I hadn't done this? Oh, yes. Yes. Many times uh, I uh, just grieved because, because I did this, waited five years, went through a lot of darkness in those five years, watching someone excel in their career while living in private sin. And I would say to God, really, is this how your kingdom is run? Because if it is, I don't know that I want to be a part of it. And then when the fall happened publicly, then it was like, okay, then why did I do that? Like it was going to happen anyway. So why did you pull me into a no-win situation? And then, you, and then you ask yourself, okay, let's say I never approached this thing. I saw the vision. I never did anything about it. You were asking, would anything be any different? Yeah. Which, which when you read the book, you go, wow, that's good question to ask yourself. And the answer would be probably not. With the exception of one thing, that it is clear that, that God is doing this sort of thing in everybody's life. Yep. He will give His glory to no other and there is no substitute for obedience. Mm -hmm. And God has asked all of us to do things. And your story may not be as public. It may not come out as public as this. But God has asked every one of His followers to do things that won't make sense, but he is asking us to obey and do it anyway.
And let me just add this. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And that's what obedience is. Amen. It's faith in action. This question. You are a stickler on. You journal. Yes. And then if, if you have, hypothetical, let's say, beautiful girl walks by and you go, wow. Mm. You're so careful that you will even share with your wife yes. that that happened. Yes. Why do you do that? That's unusual. Yes. <laughs> I made a commitment to live with full disclosure uh, for all of my days. And so I journal, uh, and, if, and there are times that I tell her. There's other times she, she can read it. Uh, but I've made a choice that uh, I want to be accountable uh, and I don't want any hidden sin. Now, I realize that I have sin in my life that I'm not even aware of. I mean, the psalmist says that, yeah, right? exactly right. And so, I, I, so God has to... You want to, to keep a short list. Yes. That's what I've tried to do. Yes. Is, is in that list, I go, do it tonight. Yes. Don't let it go to tomorrow. And I cannot tell you, Herman, how many times the enemy whispers in my ear, you know, that doesn't matter anymore. You've done that for so long. Yep. It doesn't matter yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. Go and it's up. like, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> Man up. Right. Yeah. And for me, writing out in my journal the truth of my life, and one of the commitments that I've made uh, is when my children reach adulthood, I'm going to give them a copy of that year of the journal of my life. Because... I don't think I'd ever do that. Yeah. Because <laughs> I got a lot of journals. Yeah. I don't think I'd have, I'd have to go back and edit it. <laughs> yeah. Well... And you know what? When I write, I know that they're going to read it one day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I don't let that deter me wow. uh, from putting in there. And sometimes I'll even say, when you read this about your daddy, just know I have clay feet too. I'm a broken man, just like the man that I talk about in this book. And it is my prayer that his story is not done. God is, God is a redeeming God. Uh, God's love exceeds our sin. That's what grace is. Grace is God's capacity to exceed. Now, it is important that we take sin seriously, but once we have, it's more important now that we take His love seriously because His love covers, the Bible says, a multitude of sin. Ha has anything like this happened to you since that one time? Uh, yes. I, I am in the middle of another one now. Really? Yes. That's a great question, Sharon. Yes. Wow. Yes, um, my elders uh, are aware, my wife is aware, there are a few that are aware, uh, and I'm walking through a current situation uh, that um, has a similar magnitude are to this. Are you reaching back to what happened here? Yes. And is, it this, is it working the same way with waking you up with this no, like it did? No, it occurred, I was wide awake, uh, I was walking down uh, the street with my family uh, just a couple of years ago. Uh, and uh, all of a sudden uh, I received a very clear uh, vision uh, of a, of a um, situation. And so I am in the, in the, in the middle of that now. Are uh, you going to confront? Yes, yes. And I've, I've, I now use this as a tool to try to create some sense of credibility. The two greatest... Can I, can I suggest you and I never hang together? <laughs> okay. And, and you know what's interesting is people, people say, well, what do you know about me? You know, when they read the book, they yeah, go, what do you exactly. know about me? I go, I got news for you. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Like, I'm not a fortune teller. Yeah, yeah. Uh, God Almighty speaks, and I write it down. Yeah. And when I write it down, then I pray over it, then I eventually, and, and I talk about the process of how I get there. And... I have come to terms with the fact that I guess um, as a pastor, this is part of the ministry that God has entrusted to me. And as you said to me earlier, uh, you know, God was using you uh, in senior adults and then he made it really clear that he had another ministry for yeah, you. Yeah. And so all of us think we know what God has for exactly. us, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we go, you know, Lord, uh, you, you've told me to do this, now bless it, and I believe you're going to have me do this. But then you begin to realize that God has things that He hasn't told you yet. Uh, no matter what age you are, uh, yeah. God has things He wants you to do. And so for me, I don't know why He's asked me to do this. I had a dear mother that uh, she died when she was 45. She was hit head on by a drunk driver. Uh, but before she died, uh, just weeks before she died, uh, she prophesied over me. 
uh, and uh, I have those things in my journal as well, wow. uh, watching them uh, start to come true. Wow. Uh, and I used to say, uh, is she just a proud mom or were those prophetic words from a mother? And uh, each of those words are uh, coming true. And so I'm stepping into uh, the man that God has created me to be. But, but I will tell you this, it's not without fear, it's not without anxiety, uh, and it's not without confusion, just to be real honest. Uh, but I'm going to be the man God created me to be. So Colorado Springs, if they arrive there, your church name? Uh, Vanguard Church. Uh, you can go to vanguardchurch.org. And, it, and it's located on what streets? It is located uh, in basically Austin Bluffs and Academy. Uh, Academy runs into the Air Force Academy and Austin Bluffs runs into Garden of the Gods. Uh, and so if you've ever been to Colorado Springs, there's one thing you know. They must, whoever put the road system together had to be Baptist too, because yeah. uh, they were confused. Because yeah. you're on one road, it's called Garden of the Gods, and all of a sudden it's Austin Bluffs, and, and you're like, how did I get on the, am I on the yeah, wrong yeah. road? No, you're on the yeah. same road, just keep Sounds driving. Sounds like Washington, D.C., you ever been there? Yes. <laughs> Crazy. Yes. That camera right there, mm -hmm. Kelly, is your camera. Somebody is experiencing mm -hmm. conviction. Yes. Sure. There's two things that I would encourage you from this book. One, uh, if you don't have faith in Jesus Christ, this will help you find it. And two, if you've lost your faith in Jesus Christ, maybe you've been wounded, uh, maybe a spiritual leader has abused you in, in horrific ways, in unmentionable ways. Uh, I want you to know that God is not done with you. God's not done with them either, but God is not done with you. And I want to encourage you to get this book, The Mystery of 23, God Speaks. And I want you to say the same words I said as Samuel said, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Whatever you tell me to do, I'll do it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Can you pray with somebody? We yes. We have a minute left. Yes. Heavenly Father, I ask you uh, for your extended grace, uh, your double grace yes. to be manifested upon the hearts, upon the lives, upon the minds, the thoughts, God. Yes, yes. I pray, Lord, that you would do miraculous healing. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to them in a language that they can understand and that they would feel the manifestation of the Holy Spirit unleashed into their life, Lord, and that they would say to you, God, I believe again. I mm. believe, Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ is who He says He is. He's the Son of God, the Savior of the world. He died for me. He is risen. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, and He is making intercession for me right now on my behalf. Thank you, Jesus. Would you give them hope, we ask, real hope that only comes through the resurrection relationship found in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Bye-bye.